All right, it's uh, 8.33, so I think we'll uh, get started here. Uh, just to remind everybody, the uh, meeting is being audio or video recorded. Uh, WCAT will post this on uh, their website and on YouTube, so just be reminded of that. And uh, we'll start uh, the call to order and uh, attendance. So I have uh, uh, Bill Renault from uh, DPW, town engineer. Uh, myself, Lieutenant Anderson from Police Department, Traffic Advisory Chair. Uh, Matt Keeley, he's a traffic engineer from BHB. Uh, I have Dan and Lois Benjamin. They are from uh, the Disability Commission. I have uh, DPW Director Joe Conway. Uh, with me in the room, but socially distant, is uh, Captain Randy Hudson. Uh, <laughs> he handles our traffic signals in town, so he's with us. Uh, am I missing? I think that's everybody, right? That's everybody on the board. All right, sounds good. So uh, the first uh, actual item is item number three, public engagement. And uh, I have uh, a few emails that were submitted. If anybody here has anything that's not on the agenda that you'd like to speak about, uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to talk after we read the emails. Uh, but if you have something that's actually on the agenda, I would just ask that you wait until we hit that agenda point. Uh, so that way we can include you there. All right. Uh, so. The first email I have is from a resident of 15 Lafayette Street, Deborah Ulrich. Uh, she writes that uh, she's a 30 year resident of Lafayette Street and she's urging the board to reconsider uh, traffic reconfiguration of Harmon Street. Uh, she says, I've heard no explanation of any benefit to the change traffic pattern. It was always parking on both sides of Harmon Street, so it's not uh, for increased parking. There's only one residence on Harmon Street and there was no consultation. Uh, with or feedback requested from Lafayette Street residents as to the increase in traffic on this residential street uh, it's had a severe negative impact. Already heavily traveled by emergency and other municipal vehicles and also cut through by many drivers. The change has forced additional drivers to turn down the street pre-pandemic and I expect again at a later date since the change uh, in morning traffic would back up halfway up the street making it difficult for residents to exit their driveway. Uh, this is there's excessive unmonitored speed. She's witnessed neighbors uh, nearly rear-ended when slowing uh, to turn to driveways. Trying to enjoy sitting on the porch is almost impossible. Constant traffic, adding to the quality of life problem. Uh, I think it's unfair uh, to burden residents of the street uh, with the traffic configuration. Uh, she also said the stop signs seem bizarre as well. Uh, she believes that it's clear now after seven or eight months into this change, we need the need for digital sign and police presence maintained there. Uh, show the unrealistic nature of the traffic configuration, and she respectfully requests that the decision be revisited. So uh, I was not the chair when this decision was made. Uh, Bill, I know you were uh, on the uh, traffic advisory uh, committee. I don't want to put you on the spot, but it is, is there any feedback you can give her now? Would you like to reach out to her offline? Or? Uh, I'll definitely reach out offline, but I mean, the, the, the request came down from the town council. So, um, you know, this was part of, I think what the way they were looking at it was, kind of a, a beginning or soft rollout of part of the Envision project, because this was a recommendation from the Envision project. Um, you know, the thing about the Envision project, though, was that there was other configuration changes. So there was going to be some curb adjustments and whatnot. And I think that's kind of the big piece. Um, it didn't happen. So that might be what's causing some of the consternation. But, um, you know, they're definitely, we definitely can revisit it. I mean, I don't, you know, all we did out there really was just some painting and some signs. So, I mean, that, that's something we can definitely talk about. Um, I haven't heard anything, to be honest with you, positive or negative. Um, you know, I've had one one person that, you know, questioned why it was being done. But aside from that, that's all I've heard for feedback. Um, one resident that lives on Common Street, um, I met with when we were going to lay it all out. And she was comfortable with the approach. We had to make a couple of adjustments for her. But besides that, that's all I've heard for complaints. So. Yeah, on the police side of things, we really haven't had uh, many complaints come in for the, uh, the traffic change there, except for at the very beginning when people were disregarding the, uh, the stop signs. And I think since then, some painting was done and message board and yep. uh, things like that. So right. yep. but, uh, we'll reach out to her. And, uh, have you read it as an agenda item for next time and get some feedback from the council or something? Okay. All right. Uh, I have... Well, the letters, but they're uh, Fox Road related, so I'm going to uh, hit that uh, 
before we uh, get to that agenda item. So I'm going to save those for now. Uh, and I think that's it. So is there anybody else that has anything for traffic advisory that isn't an agenda item uh, that we're hearing today that you'd like to uh, talk about? So we'll get into the agenda then, that way uh, everybody that's here will be able to uh, see what's on their mind about, uh, about each agenda. Uh, the first is uh, item number four, parking restrictions. So we have uh, Crescent Street near the Brightview development. Uh, we're getting an update on that. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us, this was something that came up uh, last fall. Uh, we had uh, some meetings uh, in the winter about it. And basically it was, uh, a complaint that we received about uh, parking being too tight uh, near Brightview, uh, creating basically almost one lane where traffic would have to uh, stop on either side and kind of let the other uh, lane of traffic pass. Uh, so we sent uh, VHB, I believe, and DPW out to uh, measure it, although uh, they may have worked it out, so just DPW did the measurements. Uh, so I'm going to uh, kick that off to uh, to Bill and see what he found on that. And if you want, I can share my screen, Bill, or? Share the screen. So we took some, we took some measurements in a, in a bunch of spots, basically. So um, I guess the, the gist of it is that this road does neck down to about, um, about 23 and a half feet in, um, in between Eaton Street and then the parking for, um, uh, for, the, for the housing authority. So I think the, the, the <clears throat> That area uh, is definitely too tight to maintain parking in that stretch. Um, and I mean, essentially, that gives you one lane. So, I mean, I think the complaint is warranted. And, you know, we were saying that during the meeting, but we wanted to get some data to back it up. Um, as to the limits on where we would go, I mean, if you go between Eaton and um, on Crescent, um, going from Eaton towards Main Street, it's somewhere in the 27 foot range. So, I mean, realistically, we could do like a seven and a half foot parking lane and two 10 foot lanes, but I don't think that would make a ton of sense without a lot of striping and, and we'd have to put center lines in and, and you know, delineate those parking spaces. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that it makes sense to restrict the parking in, in most of this stretch, um, unless there's some other, you know, information that I'm missing, but I mean, right now the road doesn't, the road width doesn't support parking. Um, so you said, so it's already uh, restricted from coming from the, um, the main street end, right? So yep. up, to Eaton, up to Eaton. Up to Eaton. Eaton. So we would restrict it potentially from Eaton all the way up to really to the whole run or are you saying for this curve? I, I mean, re realistically, you could probably fit a couple, you know, so right um, beyond the parking lot that's there. I mean, it, it next back out to 29 feet. So that would support a parking lane. Okay. Um, but I mean, do we want to add two spaces there? I mean, I, that, that would be a question for the right. group. Right. I, don't, I don't know if it makes a ton of sense. No, I, I definitely hear that. I, I try to not eliminate any parking. Um, if we can help it, you know, if there are available spaces, but you're right, two, two spots there is going to turn into people just parking behind those two spots. That's kind of, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So, it, it, yeah, there's just, just, just really just not enough space there to support, to, to support the parking. Okay. Uh, the one thing I'd like to do is, I'm not sure if there's anybody from Brightview that's, uh, that's here. I know that DPW is going to reach out to them and uh, some of the neighbors there. So, is there anybody from Brightview that's on with us. So I'd, I'd like to get a representative from Brightview and see if they have any um, any alternatives. I know that they, correct me if I'm wrong, but they installed the uh, the curb and the uh, sidewalk there. So that's uh, my understanding. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we can we can look into that with them uh, just before we bring this to town council for uh, parking restrictions because if they have some type of uh, alternative with the, the sidewalk there that they'd like to do to increase that roadway width. Um, and we bring it back to traffic advisory and yep. thinks that it's, you know, it's sustainable and it, you know, there's a good sight line, uh, maybe yep. restricted around the curve, but uh, overall, if they were able to gain some spots, I know that you know, Lincoln School's right there. So when, when their parking overflows, I'm sure they, they use some of the parking here. The other problem with uh, parking is you restrict it, it gets displaced. So uh, 
you know, this is something I try to avoid, but it, you're right. There, there has to be, has to be better visibility and more, uh, yes. <laughs> more with them. yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, uh, all right. Is there anybody, I'm going to no, stop sharing the screen again. Anybody from the public uh, that would like to discuss uh, this agenda item? Uh, Brahman Della Volpe, I would I'd like to discuss it. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Um, y when you just mentioned Brightview Alternative, what, what might that look like? Um, they could potentially, if they wanted to, to move the sidewalk onto their property and give an easement to the town, they could do something like that. Move parking onto their property? Um, sidewalk onto the property. I'm sorry, I'm not following that. So if we push the sidewalk into their property, so they're going into the bat, they, they built the sidewalk within the town's right of way. So if they push the sidewalk onto their property and gave us an easement so we can walk on it, we could widen the road by enough, um, you know, an, enough to allow parking lanes and maintain two lanes of traffic. Oh, I understand. Thank you. Um, you were going to look into the width of the street in that segment um, prior to the Bright View uh, 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 project going in. Um, why does the street narrow by so much right at that point? Was has it always been narrow there? I don't know. To be honest with you, we my understanding is that as part of the development, they added the sidewalk, so it, they they probably shortened up what used to be you know either a gravel um you know um shoulder or a, a paved shoulder oh i see okay um so what's the next step on this then so we're going to reach out to brightview to let them know about the issue and let them know that the parking is going to be restricted I, I i'd even propose that we do at least a temporary um restriction out here because i mean re realistically you only have one lane of traffic that's correct uh, at least for the at least for the 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 main stretch from that entrance to you know to the parking lot, um, I think we could do that pretty 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 quickly. And then um, we're going to reach out to them to see if they have interest in in trying to salvage the parking and pushing the sidewalk onto their property. But I mean, ultimately, it's not the town's cost. So right, right, we, I see. You wouldn't you wouldn't be absorbing any of that cost. That would be their decision if they want to add the parking back into the street. I say excellent. Is Thank there anything you. Anything else uh, regarding this uh, agenda item I'd like to speak? I just like to say, sure, yeah. Uh, we went by there last night, and just uh, in August, getting by there, I was waiting to clip mirrors going by, mm -hmm. and uh, I can imagine how that would be in the winter time with snow banks coming out a little, and that's one of the main uh, fire routes going to the west side. So mm -hmm. I'd hate that an accident happen there with one of our first responders. Yeah, exactly. With taking these parking spots away, where are these cars going to park? I mean, it seems like the building is pretty full right now and more so than ever before. And um, there have been a lot more cars in our neighborhoods sure. uh, recently. We had yesterday um, a fire truck try to make that corner onto Eaton Street and had a hard time doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of that is because of the, but I mean, I think a lot of that also is because of the people parking on, you know, on the, um, in that stretch of road. Yeah. On Crescent Street. I mean, that, that's part of it too. I mean, you're narrowing the road down to essentially uh, probably close to 14 feet, 16 feet. I, you know? I, I understand. I understand they do have underground parking in the building. They do. Yep. They have is a that large, being all used up? I mean, I, we wouldn't know that. We wouldn't know that. It's, yeah. private, it's private parking, so. It's, it's private. That's all private, so. Um, yeah, no, we, don't know, we don't know who's using the parking. If it's public, who, you know, what they're using it for. We, we, don't, we wouldn't know that. I mean, we don't do, yeah. we don't do turnover studies here, so. I think the other thing, okay. too, is you have visitors that probably don't know about their parking garage, and they're going to park right in front of the building, so that's. Yeah, exactly good. right. So that's, but maybe but we could educate them to parking down below instead of on the street. I mean, ultimately, it's going to be Brightview's issue. That's why we're contacting them to let them know. And if they, you know, need to accommodate parking, then they, they can make an improvement to the roadway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, may so. I, may I interject a, an anecdotal thing? You may. 
uh, when uh, when I was taking measurements in that in that area um, and a couple of times afterwards uh, there were a couple of people parking there getting out of their vehicles and we struck up a conversation uh, they all reported that um, there's not adequate parking underneath during events and okay. that it's it's been a problem all along so I think some people at least are aware that there's parking um, underneath, but that that tends to fill up during um, the frequent events um, held in that area. Sure, and there's other parking all around, you know, on Common Street. They can walk if they need to. Unfortunately, yes. they, yes. they can't, they can't, the road doesn't accommodate the parking, so that's ultimately the issue. Agreed. All right, anybody else on this uh, agenda item? Yeah, are, are they going to restrict uh, parking on the bottom of Eaton Street also? I mean, you're, ta uh, you're, ta you're talking just about Crescent Street. What about the bottom of Eaton Street? Sure. So, so right now we're just going to uh, address this agenda item, and then Eaton's going to be a separate one altogether. Uh, oh, okay. So it's, right. it's coming up uh, probably in another, another minute. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and that, that was part of, the, uh, part of the concern, too, was if we don't address Eaton Street, we address Crescent Street, all the cows are going to go to Eaton Street. Right, or, or or nearby neighborhoods. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. So, uh, hearing no other uh, comments, I'd like to make a motion to restrict parking uh, for that entire stretch that we spoke about uh, in front of Brightview, uh, up toward uh, Center Street. Uh, we'll do it on a, a temporary basis, uh, or at least we'll suggest the town council it'll be done on a temporary basis, and. Uh, We'll uh, reach out to Brightview about some of these concerns and uh, see if there's any other alternatives that they uh, want to propose. But uh, for now, I think it uh, makes complete sense to bring that before town council as a uh, parking restriction on a uh, full-time basis. Seconded. Second by Bill Renault. And uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All in favor. Very good. All right. We'll move on to the next agenda item. So the next agenda item, ironically, is Eaton Street near Crescent Street. No parking here to form them. So there you go. It's like I laid this out on purpose. It's almost like you thought this through. <laughs> it's almost like I thought it through. I don't want to give myself uh -huh. uh -huh. So I'm going to share my screen for a second here. So hold on one second. All right, can everybody see that there? I can. All right, so the, the complaint is, uh, as we've received it from the uh, group of Eaton Street residents, that cows are parking on both sides, uh, basically at the mouth of uh, Eaton by Crescent, and narrows the roadway and makes it almost impassable to, uh, to get by. So that's, that's one of the, uh, the complaints. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the other complaint is that visitors to Brightview and the surrounding areas there you know, are parking along um, Eaton Street, and it just kind of clogs up everything on Eaton Street. So I met uh, a while ago now uh, with a group of uh, residents from Eaton Street, and um, we we determined that at, at a bare minimum, what we should uh, consider as uh, as a committee is creating a longer no parking get a corner. Mm -hmm. So you can see where this uh, this brick front. Uh, the residence is here from probably about, I have another view, but from about there all the way out to uh, Crescent Street, no parking here at a corner, it would uh, eliminate some of the uh, the issues uh, right at the intersection. And I think that uh, that was that was kind of, kind of the, uh, the primary thing we wanted to do. And then there was some discussion about uh, possibly making one side uh, no parking on this side of the street. Uh, we were going to see at least how this no parking here at a corner worked. And if um, it seemed like there was a need to make the whole street uh, no parking on one side, we would revisit that. So uh, that's that view there. I'm going to see if I can close this and show you another, uh, another view. Okay. Just bear with me here.
nicely. Yeah, for some reason, I lost my uh, my screen sharing here. Let's see. <clears throat> All right. All right, we're back. So this is uh, this is around say three Eaton Street. So we're looking to uh, restrict parking, uh, no parking to get a corner from about here all the way to uh, Crescent Street. So everybody can take a look at that. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody from the neighborhood or uh, public participation want to speak about uh, Eaton Street? Yeah, I live in the brick building here. Um, okay. And I have two trailers um, constantly pulling out, backing in, and I have all kinds of problems with cars on either side there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, you know, constant, constant problem. The other day, um, we had to stop traffic. Cars had to turn around and go up to the end of Eaton Street and go another way because of cars being parked and I couldn't get in. So it's been a hassle for me. So sir, are you, are you in favor of the no parking here at the corner even though it's right in front Absolutely, I'm in favor for it. Okay. Yep. All right, uh, anybody else? Hi, Lieutenant Anderson, it's John Ross. Uh, I live at One Eaton Street. It's the gray house you see in that picture. Yep. On the right hand side. Um, so my huge concern here is right now Brightview is accepting a limited amount of guests due to COVID. So what we have on Eaton Street on any given day, depending on the time of day, is about 10 cars parked in the neighborhood that are visiting nurses, there are some guests, but, and you do have three, four car turnover during the day. So at any given time of the day, we have six to 10 cars on Eaton Street. And mm -hmm. while I think it's great that, you know, you're gonna have um, no parking from three Eaton Street down, that certainly, you know, alleviates the issue that the fire truck had yesterday that my next door neighbor Bill Blauvelt mentioned earlier on in the call, but um, ultimately um, COVID's gonna pass, visitors are gonna resume to Brightview, and I think that the neighborhood is being done a disservice not to be resident parking only. This, especially with, with the proposal on Crescent Street, I think the overflow is gonna go to the side streets, and I think that we, really need to take a hard look at, you know, giving the neighborhoods uh, their spaces back so they can have the right amount of visitors and, and whatnot and, you know, use Eaton Street and probably Otis and some other streets as you need to give those streets back to the neighborhoods. Um, so I'm in favor of a resident only parking on Eaton Street. I think, you know, ultimately, again, we're, we're gonna be trying to address um, overflow from Brightview again if we don't do that. I agree. I agree, John. I'm with you on that. Resident parking. We second that. All right, anybody else uh, from Eaton Street? Uh, 
Um, hi, this is Mary and Bob Judge. We're at 16 Eaton Street, so we're up a little further. Okay. And I mean, it only makes sense that if the parking stopped there, people are just gonna come up towards us, which they already are. And even from this picture with the garbage out, I mean, what happens on garbage day? I mean, there has to be, I like the idea of resident only. I mean, it sounds. It's funny that you say that about garbage day. I had to call them up the other morning because they were parked in front of my trash and the trash trucks couldn't get to them. So I had a nurse walk across the street, move her car. Yeah, and it happens the all the time. Yeah, and the thing about the parking underground, um, I was visiting a resident there, I mean, a while back, and it's very tight under there. And I can't see they have room for anyone else. I mean, it's, I, I can't believe they built that huge building with just that small parking area. I thought that was one of the um, selling points of this whole development was this parking garage, but maybe I missed something. Anyways. I like the idea of resident only, but we'll see. Thanks. So as of now, there's only one street, believe it or not, in town that's resident parking only. Um, and uh, that's Armory Street because of the uh, middle school. The issue of creating a resident parking only restriction is it's just that it's resident parking. There's no visitor spots. There's no, there's no ability to have somebody park in front of your house that's visiting. So we run into issues with what do we do about visiting nurses? What do we do about uh, uh, relatives and family that are visiting? So a lot of our, our resident parking, it's uh, misunderstood as resident only parking. It's an exemption to the, like the two hour or one hour parking restrictions in town. Um, so I don't know, I don't know that we'd be able to get resident parking only for the street uh, if we propose it to town council. I don't wanna speak on their behalf, but uh, I think that we've been more successful in doing other things like creating a time restriction so that way you can have visitors there for a couple of hours in front of your house or doing one side of the street only, but one side of the street only means that visitors to Brightview will only park on one side of your street. So I'd like to hear some other feedback from uh, the committee on, uh, on their ideas for Eaton Street. How about resident parking um, if you're going to restrict parking from three street down to the corner, mm -hmm. um, the three residents that are involved there um, having resident parking, because okay. you're taking, uh, you're taking a couple of parking spaces away from, from us when we have company over. Sure. Well, um, I think the issue is, is the congestion and the, uh, the visibility to the intersection though with cows turning. So that's why we kind of, when we, when we talked uh, a while back, it was, it was that, no matter what cars are there, if they're yours or a visitor or bright views, it, it creates a, a tight spot for fire trucks, for really anybody turning into basically now running right up the middle lane of that of that street. So I, I, we, I don't, it doesn't look to me like we have the width for two lanes of traffic going, even if you have a car parked there. I mean, it's a similar situation to what was going on in front of Brightfield. Right. Uh, right. And I'm happy to look at it, but I, I guess what I would say is that we don't have to make all of the decisions today. I mean, we. I, I think everyone agrees that the parking at the intersection, I mean, that, that's by far the biggest need, no question. No doubt. Right, so if we start there, right? I mean, there's nothing that says we can't revisit either restricting parking on one side or making it all residential. I mean, that doesn't mean that it can't, if it doesn't happen right this second or today, doesn't mean that it can't happen next meeting. I mean, I think that's, we can, we can evaluate it and see what happens. I mean, I think that's that, I mean, a lot of what the parking, what it ends up being is, is more of a, a, and I hate to say trial and error, but it's trying to, because you can't necessarily always predict people's behaviors. Um, what we would do is when we contact right view, their parking issues and that we're going to remove the, the parking in front of their building, we're going to, we're going to tell them to go, you know, park on common street or go park in other locations. We're not going to tell them to go park in the neighborhood. So um, you know, that's going to be part of the messaging we're giving them. So maybe we attempt to just restrict the parking at the intersection to start with, and then let's see if it's a problem. If it is, we can address it next month. Lieutenant Anderson? Yes. Donna Papillardo at 11 Eaton Street. I'm toward the crescent of the hill further away from this, that intersection. Yep. And initially, I was thinking restricting parking at the end, and if that's what Billy and John wants, I'm in favor of that. But Recently, I've noticed people are parking further and further up, 
-hmm. And I'm not convinced it's visitors as much as it is people who work at Brightview either all day or come and go. They all have scrubs on and masks when well, they get out of the car. They're across the street from my house and probably others up at my end of the street. Um, can you explain exactly, I'm a little unclear on what you said about resident parking and if there are visitor passes available, if there is resident parking on your street, and sure. if so how that works. So as it stands right now, there's only one street in town that's restricted to just residents and that's uh, Armory Street. So nobody else can park there except people uh, that have a resident parking permit issued for Armory Street residents. Uh, there are no visitor passes as of right now that have been approved by town council or anywhere uh, in the town of Wakefield. Uh, what we've had is on a limited basis, uh, town council has agreed to alleviate the time restrictions on certain neighborhoods, primarily the west side uh, where we had a lot of uh, issues with commuter traffic. So kind of the same thing, but people were parking on the west side, uh, neighborhoods Chestnut Street, Cedar, um, Emerson, those streets, and they were taking the train into Boston and parking in front of people's houses all day long. So when we, um, when town council uh, approved uh, parking enforcement, um, people getting tickets for parking in front of their own house for longer than two hours. So they allowed resident parking permits for those residents of certain streets on a street by street basis. So that's that's what we have in town right now as it stands. So we have no we, we have no streets that are resident only. It doesn't mean that town council wouldn't approve it, but uh, as it stands right now, we, we don't have uh, any resident only parking besides uh, Armory Street. And the resident parking that we do have, it's uh, it's a permit to alleviate the hours restriction. So you can park in front of your house for more than two hours if that's what the restriction is in your neighborhood. So you are saying if we had resident parking, we would not have, be able to have any visitor parking on our street. Is that what you're saying? As it stands right now, correct. But they would be able to park there. So typically what we do is, a, is it a four hour? Typically when we do the time restriction, it's about four hours so that essentially what ends up happening is that if you're going there for a long period of time to go to work, for example, you wouldn't be able to park there. So it, allevi it alleviates that issue. So it, it would be a decent option in this area depending on what happens after we restrict the parking on Crescent. So I'm sorry, are you saying if there was resident only parking, then our visitors could park there for up to four hours? Mm -hmm. Yep. But and the resident right. parking, but again, the resident parking is just, it allows you to have a, a, a longer period. So um, you know, really what it ends up doing is allows you to park beyond the, the restricted time. So if we did, so if we did say one side of the street, for example, as four hour parking, you'd be able to park on that, that section for longer than four hours if you're a resident of the street. But anybody else would be limited to four hours, isn't that correct? Correct, yep. I think how do you know if they're residents of the street? Do you register your car or something? Yes, yeah, to, to get a resident permit, you'd have to go to town hall and, and buy a resident permit every year to be able to uh, park for longer than the four hours. And how much does that cost? I believe it's $10 for the, uh, do the 10 or 15. Yeah, just the administrative, yeah. And that's another reason people don't like to pay for a, a resident permit to park in front of their own house. So, uh, you know, which I can't say I blame them, but sometimes it's kind of a necessary evil to prevent people that are commuting, using your street or working at Brightview in this case from parking in front of your house all day. So the the four hour where it, it, it works in some neighborhoods, I'm not sure it would work here because if you're saying you've seen visiting nurses come and go and they may not be there for four hours. So now it would basically just, it would grant them basically license to park in front of your house for up to four hours. And there's actually nothing that says that they couldn't come out with their lunch break and move their car down the street to another four hour spot. That's right. So that's, yeah. uh, that's an issue too. So I think, I think we have a lot of, uh, a lot of ideas, but like uh, like Bill said, which is actually going to work for your particular street? It's going to be kind of trial and error. That's why I want to address the corner, which is kind of the the safety aspect of things right now. Let's see if people are actually believe it or not, people are a lot lazier when it comes to parking than you think. So that that 
the corner there might be enough of them to say, I'm not going to park there. I'm going to find a spot somewhere else that's closer. Uh, maybe that pushes them into the garage or pushes them to another street, but that's something that we'll we'll address if we get a complaint from another street and we don't listen to us about parking. Uh, you know, um, uh, I think that that short of a run there from Eaton on is going to deter people from walking any further. Some people, because people don't like to don't like to walk. They don't like to walk to work. Uh, so we, we had an issue down in Greenwood where we created a whole run of four hour or merchant parking. So merchants in Greenwood would have dedicated parking. It wasn't right in front of their business because we want to keep those spots open so that they have spots for uh, their customers. And we've received complaints that there's no parking down in Greenwood for business owners. And there's a whole run from uh, Oak Street all the way up uh, uh, toward Green Street. Uh, just people don't want to walk. That's the that's the problem. So, so I think at a bare minimum we need to address the corner, and uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to at least do that to at least address the uh, the corner issue, which is a safety issue right now. And then um, I think we need to uh, fly out of the neighborhood, speak to everybody that's uh, willing to come to a meeting, either in person by then or uh, through Zoom, and uh, see if. We're in favor of one side only parking because the other issue becomes which side of the street is it? Is it your side or your neighbors that you get to park in front of? So you, you may have a great neighborhood where you guys figure that out and it makes sense to us. So we're good with it and town council is good with it, but uh, you may have a neighborhood where it's split. I want to be able to park in front of my house and the other street, the other side of the street says I want to be able to park in front of my house. Um, and I think I'd also like to look at the, the, the width of the road too. Sure. You know, if we're going to make one side the parking lane, I mean, we Would need you? different improvements there too. Because I mean, it looks to me to be tight, to be honest with you. So yeah, oh. yeah, it is. It, it is, is only fun. about twenty four feet. So yeah. you know, oh. it's the same same situation or worse than Crescent Street. Right. Yeah. So look, at, we may be looking at to make this actually work to have to make real improvements out there and spend real dollars. Right. Uh, Emily, you had something. Emily, you're muted. Yeah, we're still like in. Can you hear me now? We can. There we go. Is that better? <laughs> yep. Is that better? Yep. Okay, sorry. Um, not to open up a whole can of worms, but what about the opposite end of Eden? Because that is also like, uh, it's Real like tight. a nail biter. Like, can I go? <laughs> can I go? <laughs> so I, I did take a look at uh, the opposite end, and it looks like people are violating the uh, no parking uh, in the corner, which is uh, a state law within 20 feet of an intersection. So I think that just needs to be posted. Okay. Uh, is you really can't obstruct the uh, the view of an intersection at any intersection, whether it's posted or not, within 20 feet. But mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll see it posted when there's either issues like like your street where people are either not getting it or don't care or want to park there. Uh, or you'll see it posted when it um, when it's been approved to go beyond the 20 feet, like what we're doing here uh, on this end of Eden Street. But anytime you see that actually posted, it's either because people don't get that that's that's a law and you can't block the view of an intersection within 20 feet, or it's actually been extended uh, for other factors. So I think it's uh, I think it's reasonable to uh, to make a motion to have uh, DPW post that so uh, that way. We're uh, consistent on both ends. Consistent. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. And I can have park enforcement address that, um, unfortunately, through tickets, but that's the way it works, right? Yeah. So people get tickets, they mm -hmm. change behavior, and, you know, but, uh, we can't have accidents either, so. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so anybody else on this stretch of uh, Eden Street? Just real quick, Lieutenant Anderson, where you, you kind of have a plan that you want to put forward. Um, let's say... Crescent Street is, is shut down to parking and you've posted both ends of Eaton Street, no, no parking here to corner type of thing. And let's say it just absolutely fills up um, in the middle of Eaton Street, right? Um, how, what's our course of coming back to the committee? I mean, can we have like an agenda spot next month that says, you know. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the, the parking issues in town have been little bites and trial by error. We've, uh, some have uh, fortunately uh, improved and others we've had to make changes. And I think 
the, the good thing is town council as it stands right now is very understanding of that. So uh, they know that um, parking improvements take time and they're not always perfect the first time. And uh, like, like we saw with um, this uh, breakthrough agenda item, we knew it was going to displace some traffic toward that corner there. It's just, it's, if, you, if you restrict parking in one area, it's going to get displaced. So every, every time we make a change, we want to hear from as many people as we can to make sure that there's not something that we're missing. And then there's, there's times where we meet with everybody and we all uh, realize we had no idea that it was going to impact something else. So uh, I think it's important to uh, take some action now where we see it definitely needs to be taken and um, move forward from there and make any adjustments as, uh, as we see it and uh, with a little more participation too. Uh, so yes, the, the answer to your question is absolutely. We definitely have another uh, spot on the agenda. I don't intend to just uh, throw no parking here to put the signs on and move on to the next uh, parking problem in town. I wanna make sure that it works. Uh, you guys are neighbors literally right down the street from us. So, uh, you know, we, we're in your neighborhood just as much as we are around the neighborhoods and it uh, impacts us, it impacts the fire department. Uh, trying to get uh, the calls for service, so um, and it impacts the quality of life. So that's that's what we that's what we do. That's why uh, traffic advisory is probably a, a pretty well attended meeting uh, compared to some other uh, board committees because it's something you deal with every day. So I have uh, absolutely no problem uh, adjusting that um, and uh, going forward. And, and if you just want one more, more thing to add on to Joe, um, if you see any situations uh, that are problematic or unsafe, you know, take a picture so we can see what you're experiencing um, at the meeting. I have a ton of pictures uh, from the <laughs> past, but yeah. <laughs> no, I, we appreciate the focus for sure. No problem, Donna. One, one other question. Is any, there's a whole, I don't know what you want to call it, space to the left of Brightview. I realize it's a hill, but has anyone suggested they perhaps look at that and grade it so that they can put a few parking spaces in there? maybe with a retaining wall of some sort. I, it seems like a useless mulch lot or something that they haven't done anything with. Maybe that's something when we do uh, speak with them about this whole, uh, this whole parking issue that uh, I think gets brought up. Okay. You know, uh, we'll definitely, definitely well, ask. That, yeah, that, I mean, that, yeah, I see what you're talking about. That's a, there's a big spot, yeah. Okay. If I may interject um, on that, um, there may be some legal things to do with that. So I would suggest that maybe Brian McGrail be asked about that because I, I believe if I, if I recall correctly, um, that that was to remain vacant. Um, maybe that didn't pertain to parking at the time, but there was a little something about, um, about that particular spot that wasn't buildable or something like that. So. All right. So I'd like to, uh, uh, Dan or Lois? Um, I think they had basically uh, put that aside for green space. Yeah. So somebody could go up there for like to sit down on a bench or something, but green space. Gotcha. There's, there's, it's a hill and there are no benches and it's yeah. not green. It's, it's, it's all mulch. mulch. It's, a nice it's, looking, mulch. it's a nice looking mulch area that's yeah. open. <laughs> Maybe some stairs there at least so that the people can park down in the parking lot, which frequently has availability and walk up to the front would be helpful also. I've walked through there, but you know, some people need stairs and a railing. Well, we'll, we'll reach out to them for sure and, and talk to them and see what the, you know, what we can do. All right, so I would like to uh, make a motion that we uh, restrict parking from the area of uh, number three. Eden Street to the corner of uh, Crescent Street and also uh, have DPW install no parking get a corner signs within the, uh, the 20 feet restriction uh, by state law on the Pleasant Street side. Second. Second by Bill Renault and uh, any discussion on that? All in favor? I Aye. 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 All right, all in favor. So we will uh, we'll move forward with that. I will be in touch with uh, everybody from Eaton Street and uh, we'll see how that goes. And uh, I'm sure COVID's gonna 
throw a uh, wrench into it. It might look better at first and then get worse later on. Hopefully not, but uh, we'll we'll just adjust as uh, as time moves forward. But we can definitely have you on the next uh, agenda just uh, for an update. It doesn't even have to be uh, for anything uh, specific. We can uh, talk offline and see uh, you know, what we have for uh, different recommendations and uh, just get some updates on how things are looking. All right. Just be patient with DPW. We have to uh, move forward to uh, town council for us, make sure they're, uh, they agree. And uh, DPW has a long list of uh, signs in town, so they will they will definitely get to it. All right. Uh, moving on to our next item, we have uh, Perham Street parking here at a corner. Uh, I believe we had. Uh, uh, Jamie Charles that was uh, here is one of uh, the residents from Perham Street. So I'm going to share my screen, Jamie, and just kind of show uh, everybody what we're what we're talking about, and then I'll have you. I'll give you the floor to kind of introduce what some of the problems are that you've seen on your so Hold on one second. Okay. Thanks, Lieutenant. Okay. No problem. Everybody see that? All right, so this was a complaint from some uh, Perham Street residents about uh, kind of the same thing that we're dealing with on the other streets. Uh, too narrow of a road, uh, intersects with Water Street cars from uh, the Water Street end would be parked up on both sides, making it almost impossible to get down uh, Perham Street. Um, and on a good day, I'll let uh, Mr. Charles speak about it, but on a good day, even if cars weren't parked on both sides, if you had a vehicle exiting onto Water Street and a vehicle coming from uh, Water Street, turning onto Perham, you'd basically have one car stuck uh, on Water Street and uh, risk getting rear-ended and uh, the other car not having any space to uh, pull off for uh, them to pass. So. Uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Charles. Thanks, Tenant. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to speak on behalf. Uh, my other neighbors actually have to go to work, so I'm fortunate enough to just be working from home, so I'm going to take up the mantle. But, yeah, so we've had – I've sent some pictures in. This obviously is, I think, a Google Map thing. But uh, we have a lot of parking right by the end of the street, pretty consistently there by the street sign and the pole, going back two or three cars. Um, so it's kind of two separate issues, right? We have people not just from water, but people who live on Butler is the street that is next over from our street, which actually is a pretty heavily trafficked street as well. Um, and we have several residents who park their cars um, on our street who live on Butler as well. So we have the issue that the Lieutenant talked about, which is we've had several near either head on crashes or rear end crashes where people who live on the street uh, are trying to turn on to Perham and there's somebody coming up and there's not clearance for both sides because there's pretty consistently congestion there at the end of the street. Um, and then we also again have the issue where if people, because we pretty consistently have cars parked up by the edge there by that pole on the right, um, it's hard to see if cars are turning right from Butler onto Water Street. So it's hard to see if We'll have people who are making a turn and then have a near accident because somebody is coming from Butler and they can't see them when they're making the turn. Um, and then more generally for me, the reason I reached out to the lieutenant initially is because um, it, even when there's just on one side of the street, but definitely when there's cars parked on both sides, which there often are side by side, um, it's almost impossible for like a F-150 or some other large truck to get in, let alone any emergency vehicles like ambulances or fire trucks. And I have two young kids who have peanut allergies. And so like, God forbid we have an emergency and we need response. I mean, there's no way they're getting in on that street with the way the parking situation is now. I'm not really sure what the proper solution is. Cause I think, you know, obviously not parking back from the corner a bit would solve the potential accident issue. But obviously if we still have people parking on both sides, 20 feet down, it still makes it impossible for emergency vehicles. I don't want to, I, I recognize we can't eliminate all parking. Like people need to be able to park. Um, a lot of the houses 
on the street have pretty small driveways, at least closer to the end there. Um, so, oh yeah, that's looking from further down. Um, so I don't know what the, the right answer is necessarily, but I think we either need to alleviate parking to the corner a little bit or uh, restrict parking to one side just so that there's clearance for cars coming in and out. Okay. Is there anybody else from uh, Perham Street, Water Street, or uh, the surrounding areas that would like to uh, speak about this agenda item? Bill, can you hear me? You sure can. Yep. Okay. So, uh, Bill, kind of the same thing, right? I mean, we uh, I kind of uh, kind of seeing the same thing that, that we do with a lot of streets. It's uh, it's too narrow, really, for parking on even one side, right? It's, it's yeah, realistically, yeah. But I mean, on something like this, where it's a lot less traveled, I mean, I'd be comfortable with just restricting to one side. To be honest with you. Okay. All right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I would say let's. Um, I mean, it seems to me that the parking makes the most sense on the right side because you get the most amount of spots. On this, on this side here, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, most of the driveways seem to be smaller, I think, on the right side. Okay. The only, uh, the only issue is I think we need to uh, still create a decent no parking to get a corner because of the, uh, I agree. you know. Yep. Uh, so any... I yeah, I mean, I would propose that we restrict the left-hand side of the street here. So, uh, you know, I can't tell which what the house numbers are or kind of which direction I'm going here, but. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is uh, number two, right, Jimmy? You'd probably be able to tell us better. Is this number two here, the uh, the tent house? Yeah, on the, you can't see it. On the right-hand right on the right -hand side there where that fence is, that house that it's on the corner there just to the right of that fence is seven. Yeah, okay. So I'm, I'd say nine. I'm nine and I'm on the other side of the intersecting street that's just out of view. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I, I would say we restrict the the um, the corners for sure, and then we restrict the the even side of the street for no parking. Okay, is there anybody else from uh, the neighborhood that uh, is with us? Just want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to uh, speak on it. Bill, do you think uh, just having signs posted for the typical twenty feet would be enough uh, for that intersection? I mean the it looked like the radius was kind of. Um, can you zoom up to the to the to to each of the intersections? Yes. Let me uh, let me get over there. Hold on one second. We might need to just check the where the driveways are on the ends. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Bill, on the just to chip, on the odd side of the street, there's just one. It's very small driveway up mm -hmm. near the intersection on the right, and beyond that, coming almost all the way back to the. I'm even forgetting my abutting street's name now. Sorry, mm -hmm. too early in the day. But there's pretty much no other driveways at that section of the road. Yeah, I just wondering how far back that driveway is. I think it's probably about ten to twelve feet back. Yeah, so we'd go, I think, a little bit beyond that driveway. All right, so we're coming off of uh, Water Street here onto... Uh... Probably a little more than that. Yeah, I mean, I think if we go up to that driveway, or let's say we can, yeah, I mean, I think if we go to the driveway down, that would make yeah. sense. All right, so Billy's saying from here, back out to Water Street, no parking here at a corner. Yep. Okay. And I, I mean, I, what we can do is we can take a look at that. If Maybe we... Um, I mean, if you can fit one space in there, it would make sense, I think, right? I mean, wouldn't you, you'd rather have the space than not, right? I mean, you think if you're, I mean, if we're putting us, if we're putting it like where it says Perham, right? Yep. I mean, if there's a parking space right there, I, I mean, I think, I don't think that impacts the turning necessarily. Oh, no. It's yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's just an issue of having visibility when you're making the turn and then having space for cars coming opposite directions to at least get off a of water street. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be enough. Okay. All right, so I mean, we can take a look at what the limits are before, if you want us to do that before going to the council. I mean, if everyone's in agreement. Yeah, I would. Uh, 
I would say um, from here to corner with um, with availability for one space, if, uh, if your measurements uh, look like it, it would uh, uh, support it. Okay. Uh, all right. No, I think that's uh, I think that's good, and I think the uh, one side of the street would actually help in this case. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a pretty good stretch though. Uh, cool. All right. So uh, I've been making all the motions. Bill, you want to make a motion on this one? Yeah, a motion to um, to restrict parking to the uh, on the even side of the street of Perham Street, and install no parking. Uh, I mean, uh, no parking here to corner on both ends. Um, limits to be determined based on measurements. Second. Any discussion on that motion? All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 We're making progress. Thank you very much. No, no this is good. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we have next. Uh, Emerson Street resident parking permits. Uh, is there anybody from Emerson Street on with us? So I received an email from uh, Pat Doherty of Emerson Street uh, back in April, uh, maybe even a little bit before that because we had some correspondence going back and forth. But uh, uh, this is a pretty simple one. They have uh, parking restrictions there, and uh, this this section was kind of missed with the uh, parking permit uh, availability. So for some reason, uh, when parking enforcement came in and uh, town council started to approve uh, resident parking permits on the west side, it looks like Emerson Street was only from Gould uh, to Chestnut. Those are the only authorized uh, houses that could purchase a, uh, a resident parking permit. And it's still restricted all the way out to Prospect. So uh, his uh, request was to um, allow residents there to be able to purchase uh, parking permits so that they do not uh, get tickets for their own house. I think it's reasonable, especially considering uh, uh, there's plenty of parking there for uh, commuter traffic. So we definitely want to make sure that uh, parking enforcement addresses that section of uh, Emerson Street, but we don't want uh, residents to be receiving tickets there for parking for their own house. So uh, if there's uh, no discussion on it, I would like to uh, make a motion that we uh, approve resident parking permits for the section of Emerson Street uh, from Chestnut to Prospect. Second. Second by Matt Keeley. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, signage. We finally get to uh, Chris Hunt. Who's been waiting patiently outside? Uh, Chris, do you want to give us some uh, background on Fox Road and Newell? I, I did receive a couple of uh, emails through public participation from residents there about some of the issues that were going on uh, both before and during COVID. Uh, but uh, if you could tell us what's going on there. Yeah, I don't know if you can pull it up on your screen there. Um, basically, what, what we have is a neighborhood that has at least 40 kids. Um, very active, obviously, and what what seems to be happening with uh, with the advent of Waze and Google Maps and all that stuff, people travel north up Newell Road, and it almost looks like like it stays one street where it in intersects with Fox Road, but um, unfortunately, Fox Fox Road is there. So what's what's happening is delivery trucks, um, food. Uh, deliveries, everybody is just bombing through Newell Road straight across Fox without stopping and it's it's just a really serious safety hazard. Okay, so we're on Newell Road now and we're traveling toward Fox, correct? Yep, straight up. And you're saying it's this, this intersection here is the problem because there's correct. no traffic controls present anywhere. Yep, and while while you're traveling north, it almost appears that Newell just stays straight be, because Fox is hidden with the trees and like the actual direction of 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 the houses on top of Newell actually look like it's one street. So people just fly right 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 through it, and the amount of kids on bikes and 
skateboards and everything. It's just uh it's just a major safety hazard. Okay. Just give everybody an idea of the intersection there. Uh, so is there anybody else here from uh, Fox or Newell Road or uh, any of the surrounding neighborhoods that would like to discuss this agenda item? Hi, this is Danielle Crawford. I also live on Newell Road. I agree with Chris. It's definitely a safety hazard. I'm a little surprised there hasn't already been a stop sign there. So we're definitely very supportive of some kind of signage going in there. Okay. Uh, Hi, uh, this is Brian Collins. I'm at Fox Road as well, and I'm supporting this as well. Um, we have kids, and there are a lot of kids in the neighborhood. There's a lot of delivery trucks now, obviously, with the pandemic and everything. So it really is a it, it's kind of a it's a strange little intersection and it really a stop sign would help and keep you know the kids safe and the neighborhood uh, uh, safer as well. This is Laura Lovada. I sent an email last night so you should have that with you Lieutenant Anderson but obviously we're in support of it as well. It's just people are flying through and there's there's bound to be some major accident or a kid's going to get run down. It's it's really unsafe right now. So just so I'm clear, the request is for the stop sign to be on Newell, right? Correct, Bill. We did add a not a through through way sign in hopes of um, slowing it down on the on the front there. You can see it there. Uh, it's done absolutely nothing. <laughs> While I'm sitting here, a car literally just flew, flew up here. <laughs> there you go. The other question I had though is that you said there's 40 kids in the neighborhood. How many of those are yours again? <laughs> uh, the majority. Thank you, Bill. Okay. <laughs> well, at least your neighbors support you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's good. No I, have, uh, I have one email from uh, Amy Lehman, and uh, she pretty much echoes the uh, the same ideas. Uh, she's a parent of two children. Uh, she uh, strongly supports insula installation of the stop sign. She would ideally like a four way stop, uh, but uh, she says she's witnessed a bunch of near misses. Uh, so we have that uh, that letter as well. So we're uh, we're talking about Newell Road putting a stop sign at the end on both sides, or uh, Joe, we would probably start off with just um, attaching it to the to the sign, and seeing how 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 that did to the uh, street sign there, and if that works, great. And if and if not, we can always put something um, separate sign. Okay. We're going to add a uh, stop bar too. Should be on both sides of, of Newell though, right? I mean, on both sides of Fox. Yeah, so on Newell on both sides. Yep, yep. 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 So it's on Newell. Both will be on Newell. Yes. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, any other discussion? No. Would anyone like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to install stop signs on Newell Road um, in both directions. Second. Second by that. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chris, you're in favor. That's good. It's your proposal. Be a member. <laughs> would have been kind of funny if he wasn't in favor. I know, right? That would have been interesting. <clears throat> All right. Motion uh, passes. So uh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. And thank you for everybody that uh, participated and learned into us. Sharing this here. You yeah. must have chairman. Let's see here. Uh, this one's for uh, uh, Dan and Lois. Uh, Benjamin, any updates on uh, 66 Greenwood Ave? We had a handicap parking request there, and uh, I haven't really heard much uh, since then. I didn't know if you had uh, received any correspondence or anything on it. It was uh, for a resident there that was picked up, I believe, by um, either the ride or had some type of uh, some type of a uh, a service, and that was having a difficult time uh, getting access there. Hi, um, Lois. Um, I talked to Marie Ray last night, and she said that you were working with them, or supposed to be getting information from them and that's all we know okay i haven't we, had drove, we drove we drove by there last night and it's kind of a unique corner where that house is 
right greenwood ave and it's got a detached garage way up in front of it it's hard to tell what street it's really on right right i mean the, the concern i have just looking at it i mean you know we typically we're going to install handicapped parking at where we have delineated parking spaces not necessarily in a street that has a fog line on it um I, I there's other solutions maybe as a you know we could do advisory signs or something to that effect but um i i wouldn't be supportive of installing a handicap spot there it's it wouldn't be out of place i mean if you look on the street or even the picture that you showed us um that's included in the packet lieutenant if you want to maybe bring that up uh, it's right close to that five-way intersection too oh yeah and it, it, don't get me wrong the intersection is is pretty tough and and there probably is a need there and, and we don't disagree with that, but you know, handicapped spots, if we just, we can't just install one when there's no delineation of parking on the street, you know, typically it would be on street parking that's delineated or with spaces in with, you know, with T's and L's and all that stuff. So you have a spot designated. Just trying to pick up the uh, the pulp location here. Hold on one second. Yeah. Peyton and Cole. All right. So here's the uh, the intersection I was talking about. I, I definitely see what you mean, Bill, about uh, about the way the um, the the lining is for the street it would kind of be be out of place to have yeah i mean is there even a fog line needed on the street i mean if, if we black out the center line i don't know why we would have fog lines i, mean, I think that's going to go away anyway but even when that's gone um you know unless we have delineated spaces that are that are outlined we we wouldn't be installing handicap spots and otherwise we'd have these all over town um you know and just i don't think it creates a safe situation right i agree mean, we can do advisory signs, I think, you know, if we wanted to do something like that. So, you know what, uh, Lois, I'm going to reach out to uh, Marie again and see um, if, uh, if you folks have any recommendations on an advisory sign and maybe we can go that route. So I'll, I'll reach out to her offline and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, there is like a two pie car uh, parking lot in there for him too. And his driveway. Yeah. yeah I, I, that's, that was, that was part of the issue too, was I remember, uh, that they actually had some parking availability, so. Uh, and I think people have got to realize that when you put a handicap spot there, it's public. It's not yeah. just a person. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, right. that's, that's my spot, so, yeah. Go ahead. Lieutenant Anderson, um, I, just a quick question um, regarding uh, Bateman Court. Was there ever a uh, sign ever put up there? What did it say? Yeah, so we, uh, Bateman Court was an autistic child awareness sign and uh, right at the intersection there. And uh, we were waiting to hear back on the, uh, the correct language or what they wanted the sign to read. And I believe we, we obtained that language and forwarded it to DPW, but it's not a sign that they uh, really stocked. So um, I don't know where they are with that, but uh, we will find out from DPW if uh, that sign's coming in anytime soon for them. But that, uh, I believe, was... Uh, was pretty much wrapped up uh, as of the last meeting we were waiting on exactly what the language should be on the sign. Right. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that should be, uh, I would hope that it would be installed soon. Uh, all right, I think we've gone through the agenda. Is there anybody else uh, from the public that had anything that wasn't discussed that we missed? Dan? Um, I know that from the they public, just- Dan, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead. I noticed that they just started doing uh, painting of the lines within, say, the last couple of days. I have, yeah. Um, are they going to do Richardson Avenue and add those spots, those uh, parking stalls? Yes, they will. Yes, okay. they will. We actually just moved the sign. We had a request from um, somebody else to actually relocate the handicap parking sign there because it was the door. It would basically hit right into the door as you were trying to get out. We actually moved that up to the intersection of uh, Main as well. So, but that is in the that is in the queue. Okay. And actually, on that note, uh, Bill, we also had 
uh, the same request from 103, 105 Wada to kind of delineate those spots. We had some block driveway uh, complaints last meeting. So I don't know if you guys are going to be hitting Water Street with uh, Line Payton or if it's just the west side, but uh, if uh, Water Street's going to be um, in the next, you know, maybe uh, we look into that. Sure, we can look into it. Yeah. Right. And what do you what do you think about the arrow for by farmland on Richardson Ave, facing uh, towards the street? Uh, yeah. The, you mean the pay, the the pavement arrows? Uh, something yeah, on the street so people won't go up Richardson Ave to go into farmland, which has their own arrow going one way too. So it creates yeah, a. We do have a do not enter sign there. I, I'm not a fan of necessarily paint. I mean, typically I want to paint an arrow when a, when we have like you know lanes that are going different directions. Yeah. And we were doing that for a while. I'm not necessarily a proponent of it, personally. It's just that do not enter sign. If you're coming down Main Street looking quickly, yep. it's hard to detect that. We could add a second do not enter sign. I mean, I would. I think that would be make more sense to me than than painting a, an arrow. Okay. It just we look out our window here every day and see the cars coming the wrong way. Doing them, doing them over. The farmland, yeah. the traffic coming from West Water Street, it's right. head on and it's a. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the only other uh, matter that I don't uh, have on the agenda is uh, unfortunately uh, Mark Luca, who was a member of uh, Traffic Advisory for many, many years. Um, is uh, stepping down from this position uh, due to some personal reasons. And um, uh, Mark was a great addition to uh, Traffic Advisory. Uh, so we, uh, we want to wish him well and uh, thank him for his service. It's a volunteer position. So uh, we thank him for his uh, many years of service to uh, Traffic Advisory. He was uh, one of our resident representatives. So uh, in the future, we're going to be posting that position. Uh, it's a volunteer position. And uh, I'll get in touch with the uh, Steve Mayo on that, on uh, how to post and who he wants to uh, review applications and how we go about that. But uh, that'll be, for everybody listening, that'll be a position that will be open uh, with traffic advisory in the near future. So uh, uh, Mark uh, has some pretty big shoes to fill, but uh, we wish him well. So, uh, all right, anything else uh, before we uh, adjourn at 9.45? Uh, just one quick question. Uh, did you get any formal submission for the, the 40B on Crescent Street? I, I have one. Um, not a formal yet, but we do have the, let's see. I got one for Salem Street that I'll forward over to you. Okay. Uh, it's pretty light. We want to, I'll, I'll send you an email with some of the concerns I got off of that. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I took a look at the Crescent Street one, even though they didn't have a traffic study, but just wondering when that might come up. Yeah, yeah, that hasn't. That, that was more of a just the um, the first preliminary. That'll mm -hmm. the traffic study will come after they get approval from the state. Got it. All right, now motion to adjourn at uh, nine forty six. So moved. All right, thank you, everybody. Thanks. Have a good one. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Have a good one.